Hey, good morning, everybody, and welcome to um, Entrepreneurship 20. This is um, sort of the second class, if you will, uh, in our uh, in our program. Although we have a, a couple of others in between. Entrepreneurship marketing is really designed to be followed by Entrepreneurship One. It's sort of build on what we did in that class. But if you are if you've not taken Entrepreneurship One, you'll be okay. It just maybe it requires you to do a little more work. But let's get into that. So um, I'm just going to talk about a couple of things uh, having to do with the class. But uh, I'm Miguel Colon. I'm the guy that's going to be teaching the class. I'm a tenured faculty member here at Chabot College. Um, but I'm a I'm a I'm a an entrepreneur myself. So right now I'm co-founder CEO of a company that we're building called Telus Communications. Uh, we're pretty pretty excited about it. We'll see. You know, maybe it'll work. Maybe it won't. Uh, but you know, that's sort of the life of an entrepreneur, right? Uh, I was the founder CEO of a company called SEC Compliance. Um, we sold that a few years ago to a New York Stock Exchange listed company. Uh, and for them, after I sold my company to them for several years, I I, ha I ran their Europe, Middle East, Asian operations. Um, and so we, we substituted A for Asia. Normally it's Africa. Uh, but we had a pretty significant uh, Asian operation. But I'm a, I'm a serial entrepreneur, which means that I start stuff that's just sort of part of my DNA, and uh, it's something I have to do. Um, and so uh, I'm also the president emeritus, which means I'm a past president of the National Society of Hispanic MBAs. I think the organization is called Prospanica now. And so we, uh, we promote uh, Latinos and, and really more broadly people of color. Uh, and, and we've got a lot of women uh, that are part of the organization that, um, that have an interest in earning uh, master's degrees. Um, I've spent several years on Wall Street with Morgan Stanley, and then um, I used a lot of those, uh, those skills that I acquired at Morgan uh, to do M mergers and acquisitions and such. Um, I've got my master's from St. Mary's College, and, uh, and I am a Chabot College alumni, which is why I make an hour drive every day to get to Chabot. I'm a Hayward kid. I grew up in Hayward. Um, sort of Hayward where every, was where uh, everything happened. So um, I get to come back home um, four times a week. Um, so big picture is um, you know this this is this is not going to be a traditional marketing class. I mean I I, I, I we never are going to talk about the four P's of marketing. This really is about you know I'm an entrepreneur. I've got eight dollars, a pack of gum, and some duct tape. Um, what do I do? And um, and so we take it from a, a very high level. We look at it from a very, I don't want to keep using all these tag words, but grassroots, you know, how do I go about creating demand with, you know, very little money? And, uh, but we, we rely on some extraordinary resources, uh, ex extraordinary sources in order to help us do that. You know, but more broadly, there's a bunch of stuff we do. Um, you know, the overview, there's, we, we have... As a matter of fact, there's the duplicate slide. I'll have to remove that. The course breaks into um, uh, over this next like eight, nine weeks. Normally, this is a full term class, so this is going to be a bit of a sprint. Um, there are four uh, research pro five research projects that really make up the bulk, almost half of the class, and um, and they are going to require you do a bit of work, right? So the first one I think is due next week. And um, it really has everything to do with what is your business idea and what is your unique value proposition. Um, and then we've got the second project has everything to do with your customers. And we, we look at customers from a very different perspective, right? You know, most people I think are gonna say, well, you know, let's go so some, do some demographic research. And, and I think that's valuable, except that what I kind of like to do um, when I'm thinking about my customers is that I like to paint a picture of who they are. So I'm gonna ask you to do some market research so that you can figure out how many of them there are, but I'm gonna want you to paint a picture of what these, not physically, but um, metaphorically, paint a picture of what these people, who are they, right? So Rebecca is a 34 year old, single mom. She works full time. She has a college degree. Uh, she lives in this neighborhood, right? And then you would have to show a product that sort or a service that's sort of aligned with, with her need. and. Uh, as a single mom professional, you know, daycare uh, would be critical, uh, food delivery critical, uh, a dry cleaning delivery critical, uh, tutoring critical. There are some really like important services that would sort of align with that, you know, description of a, of a potential customer. 
But you're going to start with what your product is, and then you're going to go paint a picture of what that person looks like. Because I think it's 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 it is super valuable to be able to like literally have a picture of what they look like in your head, and um, because then you can sort of see how how they would you know in your head respond. And so I think it's super incredible, super important. Um, next thing we do is we get to competitive. Uh, we do a pretty good deep dive on competitive uh, uh, research here. And, um, and I put a lot of emphasis on it because we need to know who is trying to kill us. And at the end of the day, who are we trying to put out of business, right? And um, I mean, this is the United States. This is the most competitive market in the world, period. And so we need to understand who our competition is. And we need to understand them uh, as much as they understand themselves. So that when we are trying to differentiate ourselves from our competitors, um, we're absolutely crystal clear. And it can never be, well, John does that too. Oh, uh, okay, you know, that's the wrong response. You need to know what John does in advance so that part of your value proposition um, really sings your story. Then we're going to get into marketing mix, which is going to be a lot of fun because, you know, everybody thinks, oh, social media, social media. But, but you know what? There are some businesses where sending a postcard, a highly produced uh, direct mail piece can be so much more impactful uh, uh, than trying to reach somebody on Instagram or trying to run a Facebook ad. Now, some of those will work. And maybe some of you are going to have a really compelling uh, uh, consumer product that will resonate with, with people that might be on Facebook or people that might respond to an ad that's on Facebook because some people just blow right through those, right? So we're really going to have to look at your business and say, you know, do I send out a postcard? Do I make a phone call, which is annoying, right? But sometimes if it's a smart, well-placed, a highly targeted phone call, sometimes those things can be uh, impactful. Should I send a text? You know, what is the best way for me to kind of share my message uh, with the consumer? Uh, and then we get into budget because we got to know how much this puppy is going to cost. And, um, uh, and and so, you know, we're going to be breaking out some details. This is not a full business budget. So like in Entrepreneurship One, we go pretty deep on budget. We're not going deep, but I do want details. So you just can't tell me I'm going to spend five grand a month and turn it in because then we'll both be disappointed. I'll be disappointed in the work you submit and you'll be disappointed in the grade you get. I want some details. So if we're going to spend money on social media, over what period of time and how much. And then we need to understand in our heads the potential return on investment from those activities. So I don't spend money unless I've got some expectations. So Facebook. Let's say, for example, you say, I am going to run $1,000 worth of Facebook marketing every month over the next 12 months in order to create demand for my product. You should, you should absolutely have clarity on what you expect to get in return. Are you expecting to get a 2x return on that $1,000 a month? So that $1,000 is going to generate $2,000 worth of sales? Or is it 5x or 10x or 100x? What do you think it is? And we've got some data that can you know, help us move in that direction. But um, uh, we got to understand what ROI is. Otherwise, you're just throwing away money. And if you're going to do that, I recommend Greece. Go to Greece if you want to throw away some money, get a great tan, have a lot of fun, stay away from the, um, their, their wine is a, little, is a little funky. So stay away from the wine. So if you want to throw away money, uh, go to Greece instead. Um, each of these weeks, you're going to create a PowerPoint or you're going to do it in Google Docs or you're going to do it in Prezio or I don't care how you do it. The key is that it must be recorded uh, and uploaded to YouTube. That's the only way that I can do it. And this is important. You must narrate. It can't just be you throw up a bunch of slides with some fancy music in the background. Once again, we'll both be disappointed. I need to hear you telling me uh, uh, what's on that screen. And don't read it off. Give me a narrative, right? So like I'm not sitting here reading each of these lines, am I? No. I might touch on it and then I move on and I describe. I'm wanting the same thing from you. But I'm, you know, you're not going to take as long as I'm going to take because I've got a lot of words in me. i got to share them. And so, um, but I am going to be looking for one, two, three minutes for each week. And they're, these are a big deal. And you can't tell me, well, I don't know how to do it. Everybody knows how to do it. Because if you don't know how to do it, 
it's like go to YouTube and say, I've got an old PC, how do I do this? Or I've actually had students record it on their phone uh, and run it off of their phone or use their phone's video record it off of their computer screen. I don't care how you do it, but it must be recorded and it must be put up on YouTube. And there's a reason for that. The, the big reason is that if you are presenting your marketing plan to an investor, potential customer, to an outside company you want to help, a lawyer, you can't assume that that person is just going to be sitting next to you. In some cases, the person that you want to reach or the hundred people you want to reach might be around the world. So creating a nice, tight, video presentation is a great cost-effective way for you to share your message. So you must learn how to do that now. And um, if you don't know how to do it, don't call me. Go on YouTube and type in the question, how do I create a video? And there will be like a hundred that pop up, okay? So it's, it's, it's gonna be a challenge for some of you and you know, hey, think about it. School is supposed to be challenging. School's not supposed to be easy. This all of the the mark the final the final product is a marketing plan and um, it's going to be delivered in uh, PowerPoint and once again it's going to be you know we're going to put all these pieces together so each of these consider it like a building block that builds upon the next piece and that when you're finally done you'll probably have thirty slides or or maybe more maybe fifty slides you're then going to take ten to twelve of those slides and you're going to put together a rockin business plan presentation and uh, and then you're going to record it and you're going to send it to me and uh, and then we'll both be really really excited I love I love getting these final marketing plans so um, points break down we got about 1100 points the only thing we may not have is a final exam we may not have a written final exam we're gonna to have to see about that and the reason is has everything to do with the book the book is expensive and not everybody buys the book and um, which means that I then have, you know, 60% of the class fail the final exam. And, um, and I get it, the book's expensive, and I'm really trying to move away from books. So we'll see. Um, I'll talk about that more in a minute. So these are the grades. Assuming we're at 1,100 points available, you need 990 to get an A. If you get less than 559, you get an F. If we don't do the final exam, then just reboot, remove, reduce these by like 10%. So... And I'll let you know as we get closer down the semester. You know, so it'd be 900 points to get an A. So this is the book. It's really a good book, and um, uh, and I, I really I really like it, and I think it's a great resource for students, which is why that which is why I assign it. But I recognize that everybody's got the money to buy the book or to rent it, or and you know, I increasingly I'm feeling like this whole book thing is a scam, but. Um, so if you don't buy, if you bought the book, you're going to be happy about the book. Uh, if you didn't buy the book, every week there are going to be Harvard uh, articles from Harvard Business School that you have to read on marketing. So either or or both, it's really up to you. And um, I'm going to do a loose uh, survey later in the, in the in the semester to try to figure out who, who actually bought the book. If you bought it and you think you could take it back, take it back. If you want to keep it because you're going to be really doing some marketing, then rock and roll, keep the book. Um, General logistics, best way to get me is mobile, on my mobile and or and text me. So this is my only phone. I don't like have uh, like a, a, a personal phone and a Chabot phone. I've got one phone. And, um, and so that's the best way to get me. If I'm in class, I'll get you after class. Uh, but text, you're great. If you want to call me, just say, hey, send me a text saying, hey, are you available? And then we'll sync up. Um, do not call. I have to put my office number, but don't call that number. Don't call it. I think I've got like three or four messages from last semester I haven't even checked. And I just don't, I don't know my password. So don't call that. Call this number. That's the one you want. Call my mobile. Uh, if you're on campus, come see me. I have the best office on campus. Uh, the other instructors know it and uh, there's a certain amount of jealousy. Uh, but I've got a beautiful office. Uh, very well decorated, nice big comfy club seat for students to come in and sit down and visit. So if you're on campus, come see me. Um, you can email me through uh, Canvas or uh, or on this email directly. I respond pretty good to emails. It probably takes me a day on average. So if you got something that's uh, more important, uh, then uh, definitely hit my text. Uh, I'm on campus four days a week, sometimes five. 
But these are the times that I'm absolutely in my office. So for the, those, those of you that have early, cla early classes, drop by, say hello, have a cup of coffee. Yes, I have a coffee machine in the office. I'll make you a cup of coffee or some hot cocoa if that's your jam. Not really into tea, but uh, I'll get you some coffee. Um, Tuesday, Thursday, 10 a.m. to 12. There are several days where I am on campus until 6 or 7 o'clock at night. So if these hours don't work for you and you're going to be on campus at, say, 4, uh, ping me and we'll work it out. Uh, uh, big deal. Uh, this, like next month, we have our uh, Spring 2019 Elevator Pitch Competition. Um, where we, we invite 10 students to come in, they, 10 students, 10 pitches, we got five judges that judge, and we give away $5,000 in cash. First prize is 2,500 bucks, uh, second prize is uh, 15, third place is $1,000. If you have an interest in participating in this, um, you need to reach out to me quick, because we've got a class that we're running on campus to kind of prepare people uh, to potentially be one of the 10. And so if, if that's your jam, you need to get a hold of me straight away. So let me go back up here and let me delete this. I don't need the course overview because I've got research reports. Let me save this. I will, up, I will upload this uh, to Canvas uh, pretty quick. So this is Canvas. Uh, when you log in, it's going to tell you uh, what we're doing, right? So you can go to modules or you can go to home or wherever you want to go. Um, uh, sometimes there'll be announcements, in which case, where are the announcements? I've got to add the announcements. Um, sometimes there'll be announcements. Normally I'll just email everybody as opposed to putting up an announcement. But this is what you've got to do, right? So I've got the syllabus and I've got the course outline up here. So the course outline tells you everything we're going to be doing. Um, and then this tells you, um, you know, what to read, right? Chapter run, read this. If you don't have the book, then you got to read these, right? Um, they're both, I got to tell you, even if you've got this book, you want to read these. And because um, Harvard puts out really strong material. I'm a member of Harvard Business Review and, uh, and it's worth it. And then you've got your first discussion board assignment. And um, who are you? So it's pretty straightforward. Uh, and then you got to comment on two other people. That's important. When you click on it, you'll see what you got to do. Uh, you know, do March 24th. So let's do um, next Sunday. And then I've always got some great videos. And every week, there will be probably two, three, four hours worth of videos. This is the lecture portion of the class. Um, and so there are some great videos, man. If you get this error, which you probably will, click up here. And it'll take you to the video. This is a. Th there's some great stuff. I only I normally only pull from Harvard or I pull from Stanford, so that you guys are getting like some really amazing top shelf uh, recommendations. This is crazy old. This Steve Jobs. So I've got the first three weeks open. Um, I will add videos here, and I will probably add some more videos here. Um, and um, so expect that, you know, when you actually get ready to start that week, there's probably going to be, like I said, three hours or four hours worth of videos. And I just don't let go, okay, that's an hour and 20 minute video. Let me put it up there. I watch them all. And I only will put up the ones that I think are amazing. Um, so this is the class. Uh, it starts tomorrow morning. Right now it's Sunday, 9.14 a.m. Um, I need to go start making French toast because uh, I bought some toast last I bought some bread last week that was perfect for French toast and so today is French toast day so if you can be here by call at 9 30 I'll make you some French toast I hope everybody has a great week if you got questions send me a text send me an email uh, let's connect if you're struggling in the class uh, the best thing to do is uh, send me a text and let's talk um, if you are totally apprehensive about uh, you know, creating videos, or you think your business idea is going to be stolen, you know, reach out to me and reach out to me today. Don't reach out to me in three weeks after the first two projects are due and passed. Reach out to me today and, uh, and then we will work it out. And working it out means you will probably have to come see me on campus or you're going to have to learn how to use Skype. Um, so if you don't want to do the video, then we're going to have to do something that will probably be a lot less convenient for you. 
I'm not trying to be a jerk. I'm really not. It's just super important you learn how to do this straight away because um, being able to record a video and share it with hundreds or thousands is power. And, um, and that's power I think you need to have. So have a great weekend. Uh, the rest of it looks like it's going to be sunny today and tomorrow. And uh, God knows we could use a little bit of sun. Thanks, everybody.